Hey everyone, how you doing this morning? It's Marla. Hopefully everybody is doing well. This is just gonna be a really quick video on kind of a experiment that I did on myself recently because I've had a lot of people comment about my video that I did on pre-diabetes. If you have not watched that video before, what I was saying was, I think probably about six or seven months ago, I can't remember when, when I did that video, but I crossed into the pre diabetic range on my A1C and I was kind of shocked because I am a very, very thin person. I walk every day for miles, <laughs> probably at least five miles a day. My diet I thought was really actually pretty good. At that time I was probably eating just a little bit more sugar than I should have been, but I just didn't think anything of it. My father had a type two diabetes and my paternal grandma mother had some form of diabetes that required insulin. So I don't know if she was a juvenile diabetic or if she also developed type 2 diabetes as she aged. I definitely have diabetes in my family. Probably now 12 years ago, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, but also idiopathic neuropathy. If you don't know what idiopathic neuropathy is, is it's a neurologic condition. I have a lot of pain pain in my legs, nerve pain, and I take medication for it to kind of dull it, but it's always in the background. My normal is not your normal. My normal is a probably three level or sometimes four level of stinging bees constricting muscles in my legs, severe Charlie horses. That's normal for me now. The only time I notice when I have a real problem is if I go outside of that and the pain gets really bad, but I haven't had anything in the past few years that has really exacerbated that level of pain. It's just that I always have pain in my legs. I never wake up, never go to sleep. There's never a time during the day where I don't feel the neuropathy in my legs, mostly from my knees down, I would say into my feet, burning, pain. If you look up neuropathy, you'll see all the symptoms. Idiopathic means the doctors don't know what's causing it. So they really can't help me. I mean, if I had diabetic neuropathy, I could really restrict my diet when it comes to carbs and sugars. And that definitely has the possibility of stopping the progression of the neuropathy. Idiopathic means, sorry, you're out of luck. We don't know what's causing it. I was cruising along with a fairly decent A1C and glucose for a while, probably about six or seven months ago. It might be a year ago now. My a one C crossed into the pre-diabetic range. Wasn't that high up. It was like one point above the upper limit of normal, which made me cross into pre-diabetes. And I talked to my doctor about it and he really blew it off. He said, it's because I'm, you know, I'm older and don't worry about it. You're already underweight. I don't want you to start restricting your diet, but I kind of got a little paranoid because when you have neuropathy, you don't want anything that's going to make it worse. And I did have one neurologist say to me years ago, hey, you might be pre-diabetic and it's just not registering yet. So you may want to restrict your diet a little bit. So this past year, I drastically cut back on any sugar sugar, which for me means candy, chocolate, blatant sugar, like ice cream, things like that. And I try to cut back a little bit on my carbs, not too much because when I restrict them too much, my weight just goes down way too much and I am already underweight. Drastically restricted my blatant sugars like candy, ice cream, things like that, pies, all that stuff, and only would have something like that for a holiday or something. Like if it was Thanksgiving or Christmas and there was an apple pie there, I'd have a small piece of that, but I would not buy it or have it ever on a routine basis. That made my A1C go back down into the normal range. I think the upper limit of normal on my labs, the company that does the labs that where I get my labs done, their upper normal range is 5.7 A1C. I started out with a 5.8, which was pre-diabetic 
diabetic, and then I brought it down to, I think, 5.6. So the past couple months, I thought I would do a little experiment and change one thing in my diet, just one thing, and see what happens. I would normally eat my normal, a little bit of uh, Greek yogurt in the morning. Mid-morning, I would have my big breakfast, which would be a protein pancake with like four blackberries on it. That's it, no syrup, nothing like that. But it's a protein pancake. Even though it has carbs in it, it does have protein. And I started, you know, measuring everything. And then I would eat a salad for lunch. Sometimes, and a lot of times, a salad with one roll. And then for dinner, I would have chicken something. Chicken, broccoli, whatever. And that was kind of my normal diet. And I decided to change one thing in my diet. But what I did was I changed one meal. Instead of having a salad with lunch with a roll, I had a hamburger. And the hamburger was in a bun. That's the only thing I changed. And I ate a hamburger every day for lunch for the past three or so months. And that was the only thing I changed in my diet. So I recently went in last week to my doctors, get my flu shot, and to also get my TSH done, my A1C done, and normal labs that you, that you would get done yearly at your primary care physician. My A1C started out 5.8, went down to 5.6, and now is 5.8. Two with a great glucose, 86. I think my cholesterol was actually the same, slightly over normal, but hardly at all. My HDL is so fabulous. It's like 78, <laughs> which is crazy. My HDL is so good that my doctor just said, don't worry about your cholesterol. It's perfectly fine. It's really normal for your age. I was shocked, but the problem was for me was that I lost pounds. I cannot afford to lose any weight. Well, my doctor told me that you gotta stop. <laughs> you can have the hamburger, but you're gonna have to, you know, have some pasta, some potatoes. You gotta, you gotta throw something in there. You can't just, you know, change your diet like that. You know, have you go down another eight pounds when you're, well, I'm trying to get you to gain weight. But I thought it was kind of interesting that just changing my one meal for lunch completely altered my A1C. I think the hamburger meat totally shut off my appetite. I would have that hamburger that I would make myself and I got so full after that, I won't want a snack on anything. So I wouldn't have a piece of fruit or I wouldn't have popcorn or something like that. I would eat nothing. Maybe around seven or 6.30 at night, I'd have some very small meal. I know I'm probably pissing off a lot of vegetarians, but I know the meat Eating that meat totally shut off my hunger, craving, appetite, crave no sugars. And I couldn't even imagine how much weight I would lose if I was on carnivore because losing eight pounds by just changing one meal and still eating the bun with the hamburger made me lose eight pounds. I can't imagine what people that are on strict carnivores lose. I just couldn't do it because I'd be, like I said, I'd be 90 pounds thrilled about my A1C. For anybody out there struggling with their A1C and who was like me, because the original video I did was, I titled it Slim Fit and Pre-Diabetic. And I was, I'm very thin. I don't have any thin fat. I exercise every day. I try to walk five miles every day, but I was still going into that pre-diabetic range. Just by changing a few things, originally, like I said, cut the blatant sugar out of my diet, but still had, you know, carbs, still had potatoes, still had rice. That brought it down. But the thing that probably most drastically brought my A1C down was now substituting a burger for my salad at lunch every day. I ate that every day for three months before I got my A1C done. And wow, what a change it made. So I wanted to just pass it along. Anybody thinking about going a little carnivore, it really may help both your sugars and your weight. The weight melted off. I really didn't even feel like I was restricting anything. It was just shocking at how much weight I lost by doing not much, by eating just a different food. So I thought I'd pass it along for anybody trying to go either carnivore or kind of semi-carnivore, I guess, or keto, they would call it. It works. It definitely works. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye from Marla.